you ready? Are you ready? Oh, are you ready to go? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to go? Hello, it's Mr. T, and here we have our second part on piecewise functions. And in this part, we're going to talk about sketching the graph of piecewise functions. So if you remember from the first part, this would be an example of a uh, function definition. And in this case, we have a uh, step function. The easiest way is for us to make a, a table of values. And I'm going to put a column for each rule. So f of x equals 5. f of x equals negative 2. And our third rule, f of x equals 1. And now we have to pick a set of x values. Now we want to put the boundaries in the table, so we need to put in our table at least negative 2 and positive 5. And we'll want a few other values. We know these are horizontal lines, so we actually probably don't need any values in the table, but let's assume they were linear functions. So in each segment, besides the endpoint, we want at least one other point. So let's pick, say, uh, negative 4 to be uh, left of this part here. Let's pick something in this interval here. Let's pick maybe x equals 0. And then let's pick something bigger than 5, so let's pick 7. Now when we go to fill out our table of values, we need to pay attention to where our domain is applicable. So f of x equals 5 are for all values smaller than negative 2. So these values are not appropriate for the first function. Now, this value of negative 2 is also not appropriate, but we want to put the boundary functions into our function so that when we're graphing it, as our x values get close to this value, we know where our curve or line will be going. So to remind me that I'm going to be putting an open circle on this uh, segment of the function, I'm going to put a circle here. And now we're going to evaluate these functions. So if I put negative 4 in here, I'm going to get 5. And if I put negative 2 in the function, into the first rule here, I get 5, because it's the constant function. Now, for this middle rule, negative 2 is not applicable here. It is applicable here, here. And it ends here, but it's not including that. So I'm going to put an open circle, and then we can cross that out. And for the last function, we can cross out all the values down till we get to 5. So now when I put negative 2 into the second rule, I get negative 2. Again, it's a constant function. So we can write negative 2 down there. And then lastly, for the third function, I get 1, and I get 1. So now if we plot and graph each function at negative 4, I've got a point at 5, and at negative 2, I've got an open circle at 5. And this is a horizontal line, and it continues forever in that direction. OK, so let's do our middle function. So now at negative 2, we are at negative 2. And I have a point there. I have a point at 0, negative 2. And I have a point at 5, negative 2. Now this function does not go over here and doesn't go over here, so we're done. And now our last segment at, whoops, I made a mistake here. At 5, we should have an open circle, so let's fix that. So it does not include that value. And now when we get to 5, we are at 1. 
and at 7 we are 1 and we continue. So again, it's fairly easy to graph when we have the step functions. We've got three segments here. We'll have a segment for each of the rules. Now let's look at a, uh, another example. So here, let's make our table for our two segments. So we've got f of x equals negative 2x plus 5 and f of x equals one-third x minus 1. Our boundary is at 3. Now each of these segments are linear, so I only need one point on each side. So I need a number less than 3. Let's just pick, say, 0. And I need a number bigger than 3. Let's pick 6. And our first function is not defined at 3. So I'm going to put a open circle to remind me, and we would not be defined out here. And this function is only defined for 3 and bigger. So when I put 0 into the first function, I get negative 2 times 0, which is 0, plus 5. So I've got 0, 5. And when I put 3 in, I've got negative 6 plus 5. I have negative 1. Now let's fill our table for our second function. When I put 3 in, I've got 3 times 1 third is 1. 1 minus 1, I've got 0. And if I put 6 in, 1 third times 6 is 2. Minus 1 is positive 1. So if we graph our segment on the left half here, we've got a point at 0, 5. And we have an open circle at 3, negative 1. And this graph is heading off that direction. And now we have a point at 3, 0. That's a closed circle and 6, 1, and we have a line heading out that way. So that's our second example, and now let's look at our last example, which is a bit more complicated. Now I've already filled in some values in the table. Again, I've put negative 1 in the table, a boundary, 2 is a boundary, so those are in there and some points in between. Now for our first function, we're only going to be going up to negative 1, and we're going to have an open circle here. So just so we don't bother calculating for a function 1, we're going to cross those parts out. And for function 2, we can cross these values out. We will fill in for negative 1, 0, 1, and when we get to 2, we're going to have an open circle. And then we're done with that function. And here we start at 2. So everything above 2, we will be crossing out. Now, when you know a segment is linear, you only need uh, the boundary point and one other point. If it's a horizontal, we only need a couple points. If it's a quadratic, uh, we know it's a curve, a parabola shape, but we're not sure where the vertex is, so we will want uh, more points. So let's start plugging in. So if I plug negative 3 in here, I've got negative 4. Negative 2 in here, I get negative 1. And if I plug negative 1 in, I have positive 2. Now let's do this function. It's a constant function, so its value will be 1. And lastly, our quadratic segment, we have 2. So that's 4. 2 squared is 4. Minus 8 is negative 4. 3 squared minus 8, so that's 9 minus 8 is 1. And this would be 16 minus 8 would be 8. So let's graph our first part. We know that's linear, so we've got a point at negative 3, negative 4. We have a point at negative 2, negative 1. And we have a point, uh, an open circle at negative 1, 2. So we have our line with slope of positive 3 going that direction. Now we've got a point at negative 1, 1. We have 0, 1, 1, 1. And we know it's horizontal, so we're just going over till 2. But here we have an open circle. Again, I messed that up. Got to get the ends correct. 
So here at 2 on this function, I have a open circle. And now for our last piece, we have a point at 2, negative 4. We have a point at 3, 1. And we have a point at 4, 8. 2, 4, 6, 8. So this parabola is coming down. We, we know from earlier that the vertex is at 0, negative 8. But we are going here. But we've got this parabola shape here. So that's a side of a parabola. is pretty steep. So we're done. So again, graphing the key part, just make a table of values and handle these boundary conditions appropriately. When we evaluated the functions, we, are not, we would not be plugging negative 1 into this first function. But for graphing purposes, we want to understand where this function would end when it got to that boundary condition. And we're putting a circle around that number to remind ourselves when we graph that point that we have to have an open circle because that point uh, here, this point negative 1, 2 is not part of that graph. It gets up close to it, but it doesn't actually touch it. So good luck with uh, graphing your piecewise functions. Are you ready? Are you ready?